Good morning, everyone, and uh, good to see five of you join uh, this morning. Uh, we'll begin class. So can I ask uh, Paul to lead us in prayer, please? Paul, would you lead us in prayer? Father, Almighty God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for yet another day. We thank you for another week. We thank you for your divine protection. Father, Lord, we commit this class now into your hand. May the Holy Spirit come and lead us. May you just use all of us as a vessel, and may your word bear fruit in us. May your word enrich us. May it take us far. May it make us spread the gospel to the whole world, for you have called all of us to be ministry. We are your disciples, Lord. We now say, Lord God, come and be amidst us. We commit the program into your hand. We pray and declare all this in Jesus Christ's name, Son of the living God. Amen. 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 Thank you, Paul. Um, so today, this morning, we'll uh, continue looking at um, Lesson 11, where we're talking about Christ's resurrection and his exaltation. Uh, we had uh, looked at um, uh, the notes that was given there. Uh, uh, and we basically looked at a few scripture passages that spoke about Christ's uh, uh, resurrection, which was foretold. Uh, we also looked at um, uh, the verses that spoke about uh, uh, where Jesus, you know, himself is talking about his resurrection, foretelling his resurrection. So we read those verses and we looked at uh, where Christ is seated now after his ascension. Okay, uh, so the since the notes was very, very uh, brief, I've kind of uh, uh, added in uh, a little more content to the notes. And so I talked about uh, the nature of Christ's resurrection. And this is not there in your notes. So if you would like to, I said, if you like to take down some points, you could do so. Um, so we looked at the nature of Christ's resurrection. And we said that uh, Christ's resurrection was not simply a coming back uh, from the dead as was experienced by Lazarus and others whom uh, Jesus uh, raised uh, himself. But rather, when Christ rose from the dead, uh, we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, verse 20 and 23, we read those verses. Uh, we see Paul uh, writing there to the church at Corinth and saying that um, when Jesus rose from the dead, he was the first fruits of those who have resurrected from the dead. So he is unlike the others whom Christ himself raised. Um, so, but Jesus was uh, the first fruits of those who came back to life, who resurrected from the dead. That means he had a life uh, uh, and a body that was made perfect, uh, which was no longer subject to weakness, uh, aging, or death. Uh, but, uh, you know, he's able to live eternally. Okay, so uh, Paul writes in First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 53, that, uh, you know, uh, the new resurrected bodies are bodies that put on immortality. And he also mentions in verses uh, 42 to 44 um, that Christ's resurrected body is raised, um, or he says the resurrected body is raised imperishable, in glory, in power, uh, it's no longer a natural body, but it is a, a spiritual body. We're basically doing a recap of what uh, I had mentioned um, the last class, last um, uh, Monday, uh, just kind of uh, reviewing all the points that uh, we had uh, looked at. So that was about the uh, nature of Christ's resurrection. It was not like, uh, you know, uh, Lazarus and the others who were raised from the dead, uh, when they were raised back, they had the same bodies that were subject to weakness, aging, or death. But when Christ uh, uh, was raised back uh, from death to life, uh, we see that uh, his body was made perfect, was no longer subject to any weakness, aging, or death. And he is the first fruits of those who have risen from the dead. And I said that first fruits means there are more fruits of the same kind, the same harvest to follow, uh, or the following harvest is the same kind of fruits. And hence that when we are raised from the dead, 
you know, or when, um, or, you know, we receive uh, our immortal bodies, when we are raised uh, imperishable in glory, in power, uh, when we receive our spiritual bodies, uh, it will no longer be subject to weakness, aging um, or death, and we will live eternally. And then uh, I spoke about the doctrinal significance of the resurrection. Again, uh, these points are not there in your um, notes. Uh, so the first thing I said under the doctrinal significance of the resurrection is that Christ's uh, resurrection uh, ensures our regeneration, okay, a renewing of our own bodies, our souls, our mind, and our uh, spirit. Uh, we read First Peter chapter 1, verse 3, where uh, Peter says that uh, we have been born anew into a living hope uh, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the uh, dead. So in Christ's resurrection, uh, or what Jesus earned for us is a new life just like his. Uh, so we do not receive all of this, uh, uh, this new resurrected life when we become Christians because our bodies remain as uh, they are, uh, still subject to weakness, aging, and death. But in our spirit man, uh, we are made alive uh, with the new resurrection power. And we see that Paul connects this uh, the resurrection of Christ with the spiritual work uh, or the spiritual power that is at work within us uh, when he explains in Ephesians chapter 1, uh, verses 19 and 20. And um, he's praying for the church at Ephesus. Uh, and he's saying that, you know, uh, what the Im immeasurable greatness of his power in us who believe according to the working of his great might, uh, which he accomplished in Christ when he raised him from the dead and made him sit at his right hand in heavenly uh, places. So we had read this uh, verse in um, verses in Ephesians chapter 1, um, verses 19 to 20. So what Paul is basically saying here uh, is that... Um, the power by which uh, Jesus Christ or the power by which God raised Jesus Christ from death is the same power at work within us. And Paul um, uh, sees uh, or further sees us as raised in Christ when he says uh, in uh, Romans chapter 6, verses 4 and 11, he says, uh, can somebody read that, please? We have already read it, but... Um, which is doing a review, but if can somebody can read Romans chapter 6, verses 4 to 11. Romans chapter 6, verse 4 to 11. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body ruled by sin uh, uh, might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to, Christ, uh, to God in Christ Jesus. Thank you. So uh, we're just basically looking at uh, how Paul is uh, connecting the resurrection of Christ uh, with the spiritual power that is at work within us. So uh, that's what he talks about. Or he writes to the church at Ephesus in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 19 and 20, 
where he's saying that the power by which God raised Christ from the dead is the same power at work within us. And I will tell you what, you know, what is the use of this power. And we all, Paul also talks about um, uh, this power in Romans chapter 6, uh, verse 4, uh, the whole of chapter 6, in fact, uh, but, uh, you know, verse 4 and verse 11, he says, we were buried, therefore, uh, with him by baptism into death, so that uh, as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life, and in verse 11 says, uh, you know, you must consider yourself dead to sin and alive to God in Christ uh, Jesus. So this new resurrection power uh, that is at work uh, within us, the same resurrection power that God used to raise Christ from back from death to life is the same power that is uh, uh, in us. And um, this resurrection power uh, is in us, uh, enable us to walk in newness of life, in the God kind of life that uh, God wants us to live, uh, in more Christ-likeness, um, uh, so that our lives can manifest the glory of God. And also this power that is uh, in us, uh, you know, uh, gives us the victory over the sins that are remaining in our bodies or the, uh, the tendencies that we have uh, uh, to give into our carnal fleshly uh, nature once in a while. So this new resurrection power in us, uh, you know, gives us the power to gain more and more victory over uh, the sin or the remaining sin in our uh, lives. And that's what uh, Paul says, that sin will have no dominion over you. Why will sin have no dominion over you? Because Paul says we have, um, uh, we are dead to sin. Uh, and he compares this with the baptism, you know, uh, uh, going under the water that, you know, we are dead to sin. Uh, sin has no power over us. Uh, we are no longer slaves of sin. And it talks that when we are, uh, we are uh, when we come out of the water in baptism, it says that we have, uh, we receive the newness of life. That means we have, uh, we are resurrected into the newness of life. We have the resurrection uh, power in us. And um, this, uh, this resurrected power that is uh, in us, uh, you know, gives us uh, 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 more and more uh, uh, strength and uh, uh, grace and mercy and the power to overcome or to be victorious over the remaining sin in our lives. And Paul says that sin will have uh, no dominion over us. So even though we will uh, never live a perfect life, uh, you know, uh, in this body because we are so subject to weakness and aging and uh, um, and uh, you know uh, uh, death but it's uh, but Paul is assuring us that Christ's death and his resurrection his resurrection power in us uh, gives us the power to gain more and more victory over sin and a sin will have no dominion over us and uh, that is what Paul talks about in Romans chapter 6 uh, in verse 6 and 7, can somebody read that please? Again, verse uh, 6 and verse 7. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Thank you, uh, John Paul. Um, so uh, these are some things what I'm sharing now is not in your notes. If you notice, it's uh, uh, it's a very uh, 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 concise notes that you have very uh, little. So I'm just adding a, a, a few more points uh, about the resurrection of Christ so, or uh, what the resurrection of Christ means to us or the doctrinal significance or importance of the resurrection of Christ. So if you like to take down notes, you could do so. Um, of when we read about this in Romans chapter 6, um, Paul is saying here that the old man was crucified with Christ. That means he's talking about our old sinful nature uh, that was nailed on the cross. It was crucified on the cross. Uh, the old man is the old Adamic uh, sinful nature uh, that is in our, uh, uh, in our bodies, in our spirit man. Uh, and the human spirit has a nature. 
okay uh, by nature we mean that uh, who we are in our heart who we are in our soul in our very core being our essence our character so the human spirit um, or the nature of the old man has a tendency or an inclination to sin or to give in to uh, sin but the nature of the born again human spirit uh, uh, paul is referring here to as the new man um, and this nature of the new man has the tendency or an inclination not to yield to sin but to live a holy and righteous life so one way that you can really uh, know if you are truly uh you know have committed your life and uh, to god it is a true sense of repentance a salvation experience that you have uh is when you can see for yourself that your new man uh that is created in the likeness of god um has no tendency or inclination to yield to sin uh but has a tendency and inclination to live a holy and a righteous um life okay so when we are born again uh, paul is saying that uh, you know that born again experience or you know being a new person in christ uh, the old man is being brought to an end so when you're talking about the old man it's talking about the old uh, sinful adamic uh, nature that is brought to an end it's dead uh, the old man is destroyed uh, and paul is saying that the body of sin that is uh, representing the power of sin has been done away with it has been uh, destroyed it has surrendered in operative uh, the power of sin has to be uh, is already broken and uh, we no longer have a sinful nature in our inner person uh, uh, but you know um, you know we have a, a righteous uh uh standing uh we have an inclination or a tendency to live a holy and a righteous life um and we have no longer a sinful nature in our inner person that is exerting its influence inside out that means uh you know there is sin that is uh, in us is not exerting itself and it's not showing forth outside uh but the holiness the righteousness of god that is our new nature our new character uh, in christ even as we are born again that is exerting itself from inside out and hence we are no longer uh, slaves of sin but god has set us free from the power uh, of sin uh, when he crucified the old man and destroyed the body of sin on the Uh, cross and then paul goes on to connect this to uh, baptism where uh, we are you know we uh, when we go under water we are considered dead to a uh, sin when we come up we are considered as uh, you know having the re uh, being resurrected back from death uh, to life having the life of god the fullness of life uh, and uh, walking in that newness of life and paul says here in this verses that it this is a completed uh, act which is already done for us on the cross christ has uh, crucified our old man on the cross um so it's a completed thing it's a present tense spiritual reality in christ and that is why if you see what paul uh, how paul begins this verse he says knowing uh this okay uh in verse 6 uh, of romans chapter 6 he says knowing this so it's important for us to know what christ has done on the cross uh once why is it important for us to know so that we can walk in uh what christ has done what christ has completed so uh the whole concept of us being born again is not just that we have been um uh, forgiven of our sins yes that is one aspect there's so many uh facets to that it's uh, we looked at it in sozo as well the the term sozo uh there's so many different aspects in uh about salvation what we have received what it means to be a new creature in christ and so he says it's important for us to know this that our old man is crucified and he says when we the old man is crucified we sh we would not have a tendency or an inclination to yield to sin but to live a holy and a righteous life so it's very important for us to know this and to live this that the old man 
uh, you know, has uh, our old sinful nature has been destroyed. It's rendered inoperative. Uh, and so we need to declare this over our lives as well, that, uh, you know, whatever challenges in the area of sin that we have, the weaknesses that we have, uh, an inclination to give into sin, we need to, um, you know, uh, uh, declare this, we need to uh, know this for ourselves, that that power of sin to keep on committing that same sin or indulging in the same thing over and over again, the same sinful patterns is broken, it's rend rendered uh, inoperative because of what Christ has uh, done on the cross. He has crucified our old man and uh, the new man that we have is, um, you know, uh, uh, is um, uh, yielding not to sin, but to live a life that is holy uh, and righteous. And so we need to, uh, you know, declare that we need to know it and we need to, uh, you know, uh, know that we have the resurrection power in us and what the resurrection power in us is, is, has, uh, uh, what uh, Christ's death on the cross has already accomplished and what Christ's resurrection power in us can do. So Christ's resurrection power in us, uh, you know, helps us to gain more and more victory over sin that is remaining in our body. And uh, we no longer have to be slaves uh, of sin or keep on yielding to our old uh, man. So the believer, once he is uh, born again, a new creation, uh, he no longer has the old man, uh, He's created new, a new creation, a new man. That's what Paul says, new man. Um, and uh, the new man is born, is a born again man, born from above, like John says in, uh, uh, Jesus mentions, and Paul, uh, John writes in John chapter 3, verse 3, uh, that we are born from above. Uh, and 1 John chapter 5, verse 1. Can one of you please read that, please? 1 John chapter 5, verse 1. 1 John chapter 5 verses 1 Everyone who believes that Jesus is Christ is born of God and everyone who loves the Father loves the child as well. Thank you. So here we see that uh, whoever is born uh, again, a new creation is born of God. That means we have the life of God. We have the nature of God. Uh, we have the tendency to uh, please God and to manifest his glory. Um, uh, 1 John chapter 3 verse 9 uh, says that we have the seed of God uh, in us. Okay, uh, can one of you please read 1 John chapter 3 verse 9? 1 John chapter 3 verses 9. No one who is born of God will continue to sin because God's seeds remain in him. He cannot go on sin on sinning because he has been born of God. Thank you. So those who are born again cannot keep on sinning because uh, they are born of God. They have the seed of uh, God. Okay. Uh, the Greek word here is perma. Okay. But it talks about in the uh, translation, it is a seed uh, of God. That means we are like God. Uh, uh, his his children, his generation, so to say, belonging to him. Okay, we also have the nature of God in us. Second Peter chapter one, uh, verse four. Can one of you please read Second Peter chapter one, verse four, please? By which we have been given, uh, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through this you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Thank you. So here we see that we have been given the divine uh, nature. So once we are born again. Uh, we have the nature of God that is there in our spirit, man, that's been born again. And um, uh, isn't it wonderful to know that, you know, we have the life of God, uh, we have the nature of God, we have the seed of God, and hence we can 
uh, uh, live like Jesus lived. We can do greater things than what Jesus has done. Um, we can, uh, you know, pursue and live a life that is holy and righteous because uh, uh, God has made everything available for us. He's given everything that we need for life and godliness. Um, you know, he has even put his nature in us, but it's important for us to know and acknowledge um, what we have received and to appropriate that in our lives. Uh, one way Satan tries to, uh, you know, tries to um, get us from hiding the truth is for us not to know, you know, what Christ has done for us on the cross, what he's he has accomplished and what his resurrection power in us that is there available in us, what it has, uh, 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 what it can do in us, what it can empower us to do. So it's very important for us to um, meditate on all of these uh, uh, scripture verses. I hope you're taking down uh, uh, notes um, and uh, please read them and uh, also know for yourself uh, so that you can walk in uh, the newness uh, of life that Christ has uh, given you and you can, uh, you know, live in the resurrection, uh, resurrected power that is in us, as Paul writes in Ephesians. Okay. We also see that the resurrection power uh, gives us the power for ministry. Uh, to be able to further God's kingdom, to build God's kingdom, and to do the work uh, in God's um, kingdom. Uh, after his resurrection and just before his ascension, uh, you know, we already looked at this verse in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, uh, where Jesus said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the um, earth. What I'm just doing basically now is just doing a recap or a review of what I did last Monday. Okay. So we see that uh, Christ also promised them what the Father had promised to give them or send uh, after Jesus goes back to the Father, that there will the power of the Holy Spirit in them and the power uh, the Holy Spirit uh, enable will enable uh, the believers uh, uh, to be witnesses, uh, you know, in every place. Okay, so this new uh, resurrected power, the int intensified power is for us to proclaim the gospel, uh, to do works of miracles, um, uh, triumph over every work of the enemy. Um, uh, and this was given to the disciples, given to us as well as a promise for us as well. Uh, uh, that, uh, you know, uh, and was given to them after Christ was resurrected from the dead and was part of the new uh, resurrection power uh, that characterized uh, the believer's life or a Christian's life. And then we also saw uh, in the uh, doctrinal significance of uh, Christ's resurrection, we saw that Christ's resurrection uh, ensures our justification. Uh, and I said that there's only one passage that talks about this explicitly and Paul connects, where Paul connects Christ's resurrection uh, with our justification. This is in Romans chapter 4. Um, verse 25, we uh, read this. Can, but can somebody still uh, read Romans chapter 4, verse 25, please? Romans chapter 4, verse 25. Who was delivered mm -hmm. up because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification. Thank you, Zilatoli. So Paul says here uh, that Jesus was put to death for our trespasses and he was uh, raised for our justification. So when Christ was raised from the dead, uh, you know, God, it was God's declaration of approval of Christ's finished work of uh, redemption. So by raising Christ from the dead, uh, God the Father was in effect saying that he approved of Christ's work of suffering, of Christ dying for our sins, and that work was completed. Uh, so hence, there is no more penalty left for uh, the payment for sin. Uh, there's no more the wrath of God uh, to bear, no more guilt, 
uh, or liability of uh, to punishment all has been completely paid for and no guilt uh, remains okay um, and hence this explains how paul can say that christ was raised for our uh, justification which means that if uh, god raised us up with him or god raised us up in christ uh, like Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, where he says we are raised up with him. Him here with, it means Christ. So even as we are raised up in Christ, then because, you know, we are united with Christ uh, uh, in his death, in his resurrection, uh, in his burial, in his resurrection, uh, even as we are united with Christ, therefore God declares uh us as approved because he has already declared Christ's work as approved, as completed, as um, finished. So God's declaration of approval of Christ is also his declaration of approval of us. Why? Because Christ has uh, completed everything. There's no more uh, penalty for sins that uh, has to be paid for, no more wrath of God that is um, uh, that needs to be uh, paid for, um, no more wrath of God to bear, no more guilt. Uh, Christ has completed everything. So even as uh, God has approved what Christ has completed on the cross and by uh, resurrecting him back from death to life, and even as we, when we believe in Christ, uh, you know, we are united with him, united with him in his death, uh, because we consider ourselves dead to sin. Uh, we've received forgiveness, um, you know, we identify with his uh, his uh, burial, with his resurrection. Uh, like I, I spoke about how uh, uh, Paul connects that with baptism. So even as we are united with Christ, uh, you know, God also declares us or uh, uh, approves of us because of Christ's approval, because of what Christ has done, uh, you know, we are also being uh, justified. Uh, uh, that means Christ's righteousness has been imputed upon us. That means Christ's righteousness has been put into our account and uh, God declares or approves of us. And hence, we are justified. Uh, we have a righteous standing uh, with uh, God or with Christ. Okay. So when the father said to Christ, all the penalty of sins has been paid and I find you not guilty, but righteous in my sight. Um, he was thereby making the declaration that would also apply to us. Uh, once we have accepted Christ as our personal savior, we have received his salvation. So we see that in this way, Christ's resurrection uh, also gave final proof that we have earned our uh, justification because when we accept Christ, we are united with him and hence we are also seen as approved uh, in God's sight because of Christ's approval of what he has done on the cross. The next doctrinal significance uh, of Christ's resurrection is that Christ's uh, resurrection ensures that we would receive perfect uh, resurrected bodies as well. Uh, so I, I mentioned that uh, when Paul writes and calls Christ as the first fruits, uh, it shows what our resurrected bodies would be like uh, when God finally raises us from the dead and brings us into his presence. Uh, we see that when um, uh, uh, Christ had uh, a body that was not subject to weakness, aging, death anymore, but it was a glorious, uh, resurrected, a spiritual body, imperishable, incorruptible. Uh, and that is a kind of bodies that we will receive as well. But having said that, uh, we uh, read in uh, 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 several passages in the Gospels when Jesus uh, makes himself known after his resurrection. Uh, he, you know, still has the a nail pin prints on his hand, on his feet, his uh, the mark of the spear on his side, and he shows it to his disciples, and they are able to um, uh, acknowledge the fact and testify to the fact that it is the same Jesus who was resurrected. It's not his ghost, but his uh, you know, uh, 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 it is he himself. And so we we uh, see that Christ bore the marks of his injuries or wounds that he received on the cross um, 
but this is because he chose to do so as an eternal reminder of uh, his sufferings and death for us. But when we are raised up in our glorious, uh, incorruptible, uh, imperishable uh, bodies, uh, spiritual bodies, we will not have any scars or uh, marks uh, like Jesus had. But, uh, uh, you know, Jesus chose to have it because he wanted that to be as an eternal reminder of his suffering and his death for us. So that is where we had uh, completed um, uh, uh, you know, last Monday in our class, so I was just doing a review. Uh, the other next uh, doctrinal uh, significance or importance uh, of Christ's uh, resurrection that we receive, it has it, uh, ethical significance of the resurrection. There is ethical significance of the resurrection. Uh, so we see that Paul um, uh, also sees that the resurrection has uh, application uh, to our obedience to God in this um, life. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, when he's uh, at length discussing about uh, the resurrection, uh, he, Paul, concludes by encouraging his readers in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. So can one of you please read 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, please? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 58. Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Thank you. So Paul uh, is talking about in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, about uh, you know how we will be resurrected, our resurrected bodies, how it will be. Uh, and then uh, after discussing at length about resurrection in first corinthians chapter 15 he ends this chapter by encouraging his readers to uh, be steadfast immovable always abounding in the work of the lord uh, knowing that our labor in the lord is not in uh, vain okay so what is paul really saying here is because when christ was raised from the dead he's saying we too shall be raised from the dead we too shall have uh, the glorious spiritual uh, bodies but Paul is saying you know but continue to be steadfast in the work of the Lord okay um, because everything that we do uh, you know uh, uh, the work of the Lord is basically talking or preaching or sharing um, about Christ what he has uh, done on the cross the gospel and uh, ushering uh, people back from darkness into light, bringing them into the kingdom of God. He says everything that we do to bring people into the kingdom of God and build them up uh, uh, in God's ways has eternal significance. Okay, because when we are raised back to life on the day when Christ returns, when we will receive our spiritual uh, glorious bodies, we shall live with Him forever. So. Uh, you know, the reason why, uh, 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 one of the reasons, uh, you know, for us to receive salvation is not just a privilege, but it's also a responsibility. It's a responsibility that now, since we enjoy this, uh, this privilege or the status uh, of where we are, our right standing with God, that we have become friends with God, not enemies with God, and all of the benefits that we enjoy as a result of what Christ has done on the cross and his resurrection power that is working in us is for us to share it with others, is for us to make it known to others so that they can also uh, receive Christ, they can also uh, enjoy uh, what he has completed on the cross. And he says that this has uh, eternal uh, significance because uh, when we are raised back to life and we have that spiritual bodies that he's been talking about in First Corinthians chapter 15 all along, uh, he says we will live with him for uh, ever. So, you know, uh, it's important for us to, uh, you know, uh, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Yes, uh, we are made new uh, in our spirit man, uh, but we are not perfectly made new. We still have our own struggles, our challenges that we face, but um, 
there will be a lot of temptations there will be a lot of uh, you know hindrances that the enemy can put in our way but we need to be steadfast immovable always abounding in the work of the lord knowing that our labor is not in vain because we would see uh, each one that we have ministered to we would see all of them you know being raised back to life and living with him eternally for ever and second paul encourages us um, when we think about the resurrection to focus on our future heavenly reward uh, as our goal okay uh, he sees resurrection as a time when all our struggles of this life will be um, repaid okay um, says that uh, because christ has been raised and because we have been raised with him uh, we are to seek for a heavenly reward and set our mind on things of uh, heaven. Uh, that's what he writes in Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 to 4. Can one of you uh, please read that? Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 to 4. Colossians uh, chapter 3, verse 1 to 4. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Amen. Thank you. Uh, so here he says, since you have been raised with Christ, so what do you do now since you have this new, uh, uh, you're born again, you have the new man uh, in the likeness, the nature, the seed of God, uh, you're born of God, uh, what do you do? You need to seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God or set your mind on things above, I like uh, uh, that was uh, that phrase set your mind on things above so easy for us to set our mind on things of the earth uh, to get entangled with the things of the earth um, and that's what Paul says you know um, uh, don't get entangled with the things but uh, you know rooming every hindrance that is uh, there uh, continue to run your race with perseverance so set your mind on things above that means um, focus on building God's kingdom in uh, spreading his uh, gospel, getting more into um, uh, the kingdom of God. And we know that we are living in uh, very difficult times. Um, and, uh, you know, um, uh, we do not know when Christ is going to come back again. So the importance of uh, or the urgency as never before to share the gospel with everyone and anyone we meet and, uh, you know, pray that uh, people will um, will um, uh, would know Jesus Christ as their uh, personal savior will not die, uh, you know, uh, in their own sinfulness. Uh, we've had the pandemic. We know so many of them died. Uh, many of them died, uh, uh, you know, not knowing Christ, not receiving Christ as their personal savior, lost for all eternity. And we know that it just, um, uh, it kind of um, uh, uh, grieves the very heart of God because it is his good uh, uh, pleasure and his good will uh, that all men be uh, saved and come uh, to the knowledge of Christ Jesus. So it's, it's an urgency of a task for us to set our minds on things above. Uh, uh, where Christ is seated and not on things on the earth. And uh, I like also what Paul says, you know, when he says, continue, um, you know, in, uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, he says, be steadfast, immovable, uh, let nothing move you because um, uh, Paul himself writing this, you know, there were so many challenges that he faced, uh, but we see he went through shipwrecks, he was beaten, he was, you know, beaten uh, so badly that he was left for dead, uh, uh, he was deserted by his own um, <clears throat> uh, 
companions, his co-workers. When he was in Roman imprisonment, he writes about this in 1st, 2nd Timothy, Titus. He's mentioning about how people uh, uh, have deserted him and left him, his own co-workers, how uh, they also were uh, hand in glove with the Roman government to see that he was uh, he was imprisoned. Uh, but we see that he is so steadfast and immovable uh, a, uh, in the work that has been entrusted to him. And so it is so important for us to be steadfast and immovable because there are so many times when we don't uh, receive uh, appreciation from people, when we don't receive recognition for the work that we are doing, uh, you know, uh, when we are... Uh, you know, we have not uh, uh, looked at as important. Uh, it can all kind of very subtly come into us uh, and, uh, you know, get us to a point where we can even give up uh, ministry. Okay. But here we need, to, our focus should not be on earthly rewards, whether we are uh, you know, being appreciated, we are, um, uh, we are being spoken of well, we have, uh, you know, uh, uh, we are given places of importance or even titles um, in, in church or position or whatever it is, but we need to just uh, serve uh, uh, in the areas that God has called us for. We see that Jesus never looked for title, for position, for appreciation, uh, 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 Jesus himself says, you know, you can't expect this from uh, man because I know what is in man. We, he, he, he never ex uh, ex uh, even ex uh, expected uh, them to come back in return to say thank you for uh, the healing that they have received. Uh, so when we get into ministry or when we're serving God, I'm not just talking about full-time ministry, you know, whatever capacity we are working in church, you know, we just do it uh, for the uh, eternal significance that what I am doing is going to get uh, somebody else ushering them into God's kingdom and looking for our eternal reward to hear from the master, you know, well done, my good and faithful servant. Okay, uh, you know, we can do so many things to get earthly rewards to be appreciated by uh, people. But uh, what's the use if we stand before God and he says, I do not know who you are or, you know, uh, he, we, we are not uh, uh, given the reward for what we have worked for. So don't get into the whole rut of um, or caught up into this whole uh, system of position, honor, uh, you know, titles, um, uh, you know, being appreciated for what you have done, even though you've really slogged and worked hard. Uh, but, you know, just serve sincerely, serve faithfully, uh, persevere, continue to run your race, uh, knowing that, you know, uh, you will receive your reward in uh, heaven. That is what Paul writes when, um, you know, he's in his final days in Roman imprisonment and he's uh, in Second Timothy, he says, you know, even though I'm going through all of this and I know death is impending on me, it's looming large over me, it's staring at me in the face, so to say, uh, Paul is saying that, uh, you know, I have uh, this assurance, this great hope uh, that what I have entrusted uh, to him, he is well able to guard. That means, uh, uh, you know, the salvation, uh, you know, God is, uh, has guarded that for me and I'm going to receive eternal life. I'm going to receive the crown because I have finished the race and there awaits for me a crown. Um, you know, so uh, let's focus on our uh, heavenly rewards and not our earthly uh, rewards. And the third et uh, ethical application of the resurrection is, uh, you know, an obligation to stop yielding to sin in our uh, lives. And we've also, I've also spoken about this in uh, what Paul writes in Romans chapter 6. Um, uh, in verse 11, he says, Paul says, consider yourself. He says, consider ourselves. I like to make it personal for each one of us. Consider ourselves, uh, you know, dead to sin and alive to God in Christ. So by virtue of uh, Christ's resurrection or the resurrection of Christ and his resurrection power in us, uh, you know, we need to consider ourselves dead to sin. Uh, hence, we stop yielding um, 
to sin. And then Paul goes on immediately to say, uh, let uh, not sin reign in your mortal bodies. So when does sin not reign in our bodies is when we don't feed our sinful carnal nature, but we are feeding our spirit uh, nature. And uh, he's writing in verses 12 to 13, he says, don't yield your members of of your body to sin. Don't yield to sin. Don't give in to um, sin. So the fact that we have this new resurrected uh, power that is innate in us, that is in us, the nature of God that is in us, the minute that we are born again uh, is over, uh, you know, gives us the uh, dominion over sin in our lives. Um, and then hence Paul is using that as a reason uh, to encourage us to exhort us not to sin anymore. Okay. So that is about the doctrinal significance of resurrection, uh, which is not there in your notes, but I have just given you uh, a little more about the nature of Christ's resurrection and the doctrinal significance of uh, resurrection. Okay, we'll take a break now and we'll come back and then uh, we'll answer any of your queries, your questions, uh, doubts, or any comments you have. And then we'll look briefly at uh, chapter 12, which is very, very brief, uh, just a few uh, paragraphs, not even paragraphs, just verses, and then we'll end class. Okay, we'll go for our break now. Thank you. <laughs> 